Dear Mojang, hi, it's me, Austin. I'm dropping everything I'm doing right now to make this video because ADHD. This includes still putting off a cool Pokemon video where I go over the math of one of Picaspre's soft lock picking videos. I already did the math, I just have to, uh, you know, write it because, um... You know, did I mention ADHD? <laughs> I've been off my meds for two months, too. God, I've been so unproductive. It's been hell. I wish they'd make it easier for people to get and stay on their ADHD medication in the United States, because as it is right now, it literally is an ADHD gauntlet to get diagnosed, treated, and stay treated. But none of this relates to Mojang or Minecraft, so let's just get to the meat of the video. Pistons. The topic of today's video was brought to you by a conversation I had on Twitter, or rather a question that was asked of me on Twitter by user Ado Badia. A question that sounds simple at face value. Minecraft Pistons. Strength, horsepower, force. That's right, baby. Let's get started. This is my jam. Numbers, let's go! This is a piston. I never use them in any of my games because, as you know, I'm an idyllic farmer in Minecraft. I find joy in the simple things in life, in tilling the soil, in animal husbandry. I have very little need for redstone devices and industrial things. But there's some really cool things you can do with pistons, which are powered by redstone, like make elevators, auto harvesters, and all sorts of things. Pistons are truly wonderful things that shouldn't be under estimated in their utility, but they do have some limitations, some of which depends upon which version of Minecraft you are playing. In Java Edition, the one I'm usually playing, they work like this. They move any number of blocks between 1 and 12, one block forward when they're activated. Easy. So in order to figure out how powerful they are, we have to figure out a couple of things. One, what's the highest amount of mass they can push? And two, how quickly do they push that mass? The second one might sound trivial and unimportant, but it's actually the most important bit. Almost anything can be moved any distance with any amount of force if given enough time. This is how levers work in real life. By multiplying the distance and time over the length of the lever from operator to object, it makes it possible for small small forces to move relatively heavy things just by extending the period over which that force is applied. That's an oversimplification of course, but it's why one person can eventually push a car one mile to a gas station to refill with gas. It just takes a long time given how much less force our bodies can output compared to a car engine. But you know what doesn't have the output of a car engine? Raycon earbuds! At least I hope they don't have the power output of a car engine, that'd be pretty spooky. I'm addicted to having something in my ears at all times. Did I mention I have ADHD? I can't even write scripts for these videos without having music playing constantly, and Raycon has got me covered on that front. There's a reason they sold over 3 million of their everyday earbuds, which by the way just got upgraded to include active noise cancellation, and for someone like me who just started hitting the gym again, they have IP6. 66 sweat resistance so they don't electrocute me while I'm trying not to die on the rowing machine. And since I constantly forget to charge them overnight after watching YouTube in bed, their quick charging feature is a lifesaver, giving them one and a half hours of listening time with just 10 minutes in the charger. I love these things. They keep me sane during the workday and someday will be the key to me finally being the muscle mommy of my dreams. Just go to buyraycon.com slash shoddycast for 20% off your order and free shipping. 20%! That's a lot! Anyway, where was I? Oh, right, pistons! So, first of all, what's the heaviest thing in Minecraft? Well, it's probably the gold block. Gold is one of the densest materials known to man, and it's certainly the densest thing in Minecraft, barring some magical properties in bedrock or something. It's certainly the densest thing we know of in-game. A single block is one meter by one meter by one meter in size, or precisely one cubic meter. It's possible in-game to make a block of 
solid gold, and gold has a density of 19,320 kilos per cubic meter, which means, that's right, a single block has a mass of 19.3 thousand kilograms, which makes our math actually pretty easy. A piston, once activated, takes approximately 7 frames at 60 frames per second to push a block precisely one block forward, which is one meter. That's about 117 milliseconds, which is pretty damn fast, so let's look at the original question again. Edo wants to know what the strength is and what's the horsepower. Strength is kind of vague, unfortunately, but let's use force as a stand-in here. Horsepower, meanwhile, is a measurement unit for power, which is to say it's joules per second. We'll get to the actual unit later because first we're going to start by answering the quote-unquote easy question, which is how much force does the piston output? Well, let's look at what's happening here, right? Because force is mass times acceleration. And mass? We got that bit. It's 19,320 kilograms for our one block of gold. Don't worry, we will get to the 12 later, I promise. We're just going to keep things simple for now. Anyway, so 19,000 kilos. It starts at a resting velocity of 0 meters per second, and technically it also stops instantly, but we're going to just ignore that part for now. We have to figure out its max speed. It actually seems to take just a bit for the piston to reach its top speed, 3 frames. This is our acceleration time, exactly 50 milliseconds. This is about 42.8% of the way into the journey, meaning once it reaches this speed, it travels the rest of the way at max speed before stopping at exactly 1 meter's distance away. With some pretty careful angling of my camera, I could get a good shot of its journey and determine that within those 50 milliseconds, it made it to here on the texture of a dirt block, or approximately 6 pixels into the dirt block's one meter long texture. A block is a total of 16 by 16 pixels, so this was 37.5% of the total distance covered. This amounts to 0.375 meters, after which it has reached its max velocity and travels the rest of the 0.625 meters at its top speed. That's 0.625 meters in 4 frames, or 67 milliseconds, which we can just do distance over time to get the velocity, which comes to 9.375 5 meters per second. Woohoo! Okay, so acceleration, which gets us force, right? Right. So from 0 to 9.375 meters per second in 0.05 seconds, that's velocity final equals velocity initial plus acceleration times time. Velocity initial cancels out because it's 0 divided by time to isolate the acceleration. A equals VF divided by T, which equals 187.5 meters per second per second, which is a lot of acceleration. So we got our mass and we got our acceleration. All we got to do is multiply them together to get 3.6 million newtons of pushing force, right? Well, Almost. That's just the force from acceleration, but it's not the only force we have to worry about. See, the block of gold is sitting on the ground and it's being pulled down by gravity. What's Minecraft's gravity again? That's right, it's 32 meters per second squared, which we figured out in some video somewhere from a wiki page somewhere else. Doesn't matter, it's the truth. Okay, so let's get a little into high school physics here, which we never actually do get this deep, but I think, you know, it's good to cover. It'll get you ready for your time in high school physics. In order to push something that's resting on a surface with gravity, you have to overcome its static friction forces. This is the friction force that's keeping it in the same place. This is why if you try to push something that's not bolted to the ground, it doesn't always move. The force of friction is just too high. You have to input enough force to overcome this frictional force first. Then, once the object is moving, you have to keep overcoming the force of friction, but not as much now that it's already not stationary. So what's the initial force of friction for this gold block? Well, we can eyeball it a bit to get a sense of it. Let's take this formula. One half times mass times gravity, or 0 0.5 times 19,320 kilograms times 32. Kilograms times 32 meters per second per second, which gets us... Oh, 
only 309,120 newtons. That's a whole order of magnitude less than the force required to accelerate. So um, I guess that makes sense. The acceleration was massively higher than the force of gravity all said and done. That said, adding the two together, we get a total force applied of 3.9 million newtons or 3.9 mega newtons. That's the force of the space shuttle taking off. That's pretty intense, but the astute among you know that we're not even close to done yet because we actually can push 12 blocks all at once, which means our numbers are 12 times bigger. So our new number is 47.2 mega newtons of force, which is, well, it's the force of 12 space shuttles or the Saturn V rocket taking off, all contained in this little thing here that incidentally is too weak to push a jukebox? What is that about? And what about horsepower? Well, that's a bit trickier to calculate since watts are joules over time. A joule is the amount of work done when a force of one newton displaces a mass through a distance of one meter in the direction of the force applied. So we have um, a mass of 231,840 kilograms moving one meter. Okay, that's actually not that tricky at all. It's 231,480 joules of energy over one second, bada bing, 231,480 watts. A metric horsepower is 735.5 watts, so that is 315 horsepower. That's a lot of power. So, bam, we're done, right? <laughs> oh, my sweet summer child. If you think we're done, then you haven't been paying close enough attention because this is a number for Java Edition, things get even crazier when you consider Bedrock Edition. So in Java Edition, you cannot push chess, but this limitation is not the case in Bedrock Addiction. Addiction? Bedrock Addiction! I'm addicted to that bedrock! But this limitation is not the case in Bedrock Edition, where you can push 12 chests. 12. And for the sake of sanity, we're going to ignore any exploits involving nesting chests and just look at them as designed. As boxes that can hold 27 of any object. No. Scratch that, 27 stacks of any object. That's right, baby. Each chest can carry 27 full stacks of 64 gold blocks, which means each chest weighs 33.38 million kilograms. This gives us a coefficient of static friction of 534 million newtons, meaning the static friction needed to move these things alone is bigger than the entire force needed to move the original 12 stacks of gold blocks. Now we're cooking with gas! Each chest moving at 187.5 meters per second per second of acceleration is going to be pushed with 6.79 billion newtons of force, which is 6.79 giga newtons, which is hard to quantify in understandable terms, but it's something close to the amount of force the sun exerts on the earth in the form of sunlight. That's a lot of force if you consider how powerful the sun is, but Again, that is just one chest. The real numbers are even bigger, 81.5 giganewtons. And what about horsepower? Well, at 400 million watts, we're talking about the amount of energy released by a freaking bomb being dropped from an aircraft in the middle of a war. Forget horsepower, this thing would be literally exploding from the heat it created from its operation. The instant you pulled that lever, boom, you're atomized. You better create a redstone contraption that puts puts you behind a thick-ass bunker if you're thinking about pulling the trigger on this bad boy because it is, seriously, no joke. And if you do consider doing some manipulations that allow you to nest effectively infinite chests inside one another, that's over then, folks. You're talking about a device with effectively infinite energy. You might as well surround it with shielding and make a futuristic power plant out of it because you've found a device that has more energy than we could possibly ever make with nuclear fusion. Since Sincerely, Austin. That was a fun video. I had a lot of fun making it. I hope you had fun watching it. And I have to put out a personal thank you to my Patreon patrons who are Patreon patrons. Uh, but especially these folks who stand out from the rest of the crowd by donating enough money to get their names read out loud by me at the end of videos. I'm talking about M. Lopez, Dr. Vem, Ronald Coleman, Adam TP, Marissa Resnick, Alan Hagers, and Loretta Mazurf. And before I go, before I go away, I have to let you know this may, may something, uh oh. I didn't look at my- <laughs> I didn't look at- I'm off the cuff here, I didn't look at my calendar. May 18th and 19th, I'm gonna be live streaming for 
a marathon length of time, like 10 hours, 12 hours each day of Elden Ring getting ready. There will be a video coming out with a little bit more details, but I'm going to be live streaming Elden Ring to raise money for American Mental Health um, nonprofit. Um, I hope you guys can be there. It should be coming out shortly after this video. Yeah, it's going to be like a week after this video comes out. So, uh, yeah, get ready. Get rearing to go because it's coming on this channel.